appreciate you guys standing by. And I, I was just mentioning that, um, you know, we sure do appreciate your time being here. Um, going to try to keep it as, as, as short as possible. Obviously, we want to hit on some of these these key points here uh, when you're purchasing a fire suppression system. But I know your time is very valuable. So, you know, again, we sure do appreciate your time. All right. So first and foremost, just a, a quick introduction to myself. Um, I've been in this business. I've been a manufacturing representative for uh, almost uh, 15 years now. Um, I'm new with AFEX, or not new with AFEX, but I've been around for about a year and a half now. Um, and, uh, you know, love what I do here. Uh, it's a great company. And, uh, you know, of course, we work directly with uh, distribution, OEMs, uh, end users, um, you know, whatever we can do to help out. That's what we're here for. Um, I was born in North Carolina. Um, I love Duke basketball. So from North Carolina, you, you either like UNC basketball or Duke basketball. So it's kind of here in North Carolina, it's a, it's what we call a house divided typically. So uh, love Duke basketball, love playing golf, love to fish. You know, every time I'm up in Canada, I always, uh, you know, go by the local rivers or, or the ponds and whatnot, I always see people fly fishing. So uh you know, if you ever see me around, come up, say hello. Um, typically at a lot of the trade shows, um, mining trade shows, forestry trade shows, things like that. So uh, if you see me around, please come up and say hello. All right, so let's dive right into it. Um, seven mistakes when selecting a heavy equipment fire suppression system. Um, so, of course, there's a lot of different systems on the market. Um, you know, just looking at it from if you go out to buy a car, obviously you can buy, a, you know, a bottom end type of car or you can get a Cadillac or, you know, whatever the highest end car may be. Same type of thing for fire suppression systems. Um, so you can go with something really cheap. You can go with something really expensive. But really what you're looking for is the best price with the best value there um, at the end of the day. Um, so um, there's really, you know. A few different things. So we'll discuss fire risk assessment, uh, third party certifications and why those are so important, uh, maintenance plans. So, you know, a fire suppression system is really only as good uh, as it's maintained. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, really all the things necessary, um, you know, to provide that maximum type of safety for your people, um, not only your people, but your production and your profits. Um, you know, trying to eliminate any type of fire. All right. Numero uno, number one, go with the lowest price option. So again, these are seven mistakes that people typically make when they're going to buy a fire suppression system. So, you know, you guys are spending, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars um, on these machines, right? And, uh, you know, one simple fire, if you don't have a fire suppression system, can completely take out the, the machine um, and also, you know, put your operator in the, uh, um, you know, in the line of injury there. So uh, do not just go and look at the lowest priced option. It's very, very important that you do your uh, due diligence uh, when it comes to uh, picking a fire suppression system. So some of those uh, contributing factors are going to be uh, higher quality components. Uh, so here at Apex, uh, we do things a little bit differently. So we use uh, hinge nozzles, for example. We use a lot of stainless steel tubing. Um, so you want to make sure you're getting the most, you know, reliable and robust system um, on the market. Um, what is the expertise of the manufacturer? So, you know, obviously going in and looking, um, you know, online, there's a lot of different things that you can research and find out, um, you know, who has some of the, the, the highest quality components. How long have these people been in business? Uh, what is their core business value? Uh, for example, at Apex, all we do here is vehicle fire suppression. So, you know, when you buy an Apex system, you know you're going to get a system that is tailored for uh, yellow iron or, you know, any type of uh, piece of heavy equipment. Um, and then you want to make sure you have a reliable support network. So, you know, here at Apex, we have a uh, complex uh, distribu uh, distribution throughout Canada. So, um, you know, we want to make or you want to make sure that whatever product that you're buying, they have the support on the back end. Because as I mentioned in the first 
a uh, few minutes there. Um, you know, you want to make sure that the the company that you're working with, um, you know, has that support around them. Uh, moving forward here, number two. You know, you could just say, hey, let's just skip the fire risk assessment. Um, I got a, uh, a recommendation from the manufacturer and we're, we're good to go. Uh, this is a, uh, a very big mistake. Of course, you know, most fire suppression manufacturers are going to give you a recommendation on what they think uh, your machine should get. But typically something gets lost in translation, uh, whether it may be, you know, a lot of these machines have a, a dash A or a dash B. Uh, they're all manipulated a little bit differently. So uh, it is very, very important that you go out and do that fire risk assessment. Uh, and within that assessment, you're going to be, you know, looking for ignition and fuel sources, um, personnel exposure, economic risk, uh, risk, excuse me, um, you know, available fire suppression alternatives. And then you're going to be able to select the, the correct su suppression system and hardware uh, for the machine. Um, so, you know, fire risk assessments are, are, are very, very important. It's probably the one, you know, one of the most crucial steps in this process. Um, you know, identifying the risk, making sure, uh, you know, the turbos, the exhaust manifold, uh, whatever it may be, all that stuff is being protected uh, it is very, very important. Um, you know, one of the things that we say and, and the reason for doing this fire risk assessment is so important um, is because, you know, if you if if you under supply, OK, so, you know, um, maybe the machine needed 260 pound dry and two five gallon liquid, but you only put two sixties and one five on, you know, we like to say if you're under protecting the machine, you're not protecting it at all. Um, you know, as we said, the most important thing is that your, you know, operator stay safe, but, you know, saving the machine at the end of the day is the most important thing. So skipping that fire risk assessment, uh, you, you know, can be very, very tragic for you. So you got to make sure you do the, the FRA, as we call it in the business. Okay, number three, select the smallest size system to meet the equipment demands. So, you know, we all know that, you know, budgets are, are a big thing, right? And, uh, you know, staying within budget, not going over budget. Nobody wants their boss yelling at them and this and that. Uh, when it comes to a safety type of product, you really got to maybe not throw that out the window, but you really need, need to be careful uh, because, as I mentioned, not putting enough agent on this on the machine is, is, is just as bad as, uh, as not putting anything on the machine at all. So you got to make sure you go through that FRA, you do a thorough investigation there about where you want your nozzles to go, how much uh, powder, how much wet chemical that you need, um, <clears throat> you know, to make sure that the machine, you know, is protected. Um, moving forward here, and, you know, this is just uh, one of those things where you don't want to just check the box. Um, so you know, you know, you want to go above and beyond. You don't want to just take somebody's word for it um, type of thing. You know, you want to have your, you know, if it's the manufacturer that's out there on site walking around the machine or the distributor, uh, that fire risk assessment, you need to have people going around physically with their eyes, looking at it, trying to determine where things need to go. Uh, but so many people get, you know, fall into this trap. Uh, you know, where we see it typically the most is when, um, you know, we'll be talking with a, with a customer or a prospect and they'll say, hey, you know what, we're just going to uh, we're just going to take the, the, the fire suppression system that comes from the factory. It's going to be uh, it's cheaper and, and, and this and that. And, you know, at some points that if you have a reliable system that you're getting from the factory, that's OK. Um, but at the end of the day, we always like to say it's very important that uh, that you have a distributor. Uh, that can come in and do these things for you. You know, that's why we go out and certify all our distributors. Uh, so, you know, they're kind of our boots on the ground, if you will. Um, so make sure, you know, you're not just picking the, the smallest system out there just to get by, just to meet a budget here or there. Um, because at the end of the day, the guy that's doing that budget, he's more worried about keeping these machines into production. Um, 
you know, than than they are really about saving saving a dime or two here and there because you know, especially in the mining industry, uh, production is is definitely king. Okay, number four, discounting the benefits of a dual agent system. So, uh, you know, here at Apex, we use uh, both liquid and dry chemical. Um, you know, liquid chemical is great. It's a great product. Uh, you know, a lot of our, our competition is, is using a liquid only system. Um, but we really think, especially on the bigger machines, um, and not just us, it's not just us thinking it, um, you know, we go by the NFPA. The NFPA says, hey, if you've got more than 150 gallons of, uh, of uh, diesel fuel or a hydraulic, uh, you need to have a dual agent system. Same thing for uh, hydraulic shovels. Um, so dual agent needs to be present on all hydraulic shovels uh, per the NFPA. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, both agents we think is is the best way to put out the fire. Um, so dry chemical is going to be the fastest fire knockdown. Uh, and then the liquid chemical is really going to be used for your super hot surfaces. So, uh, for example, maybe your uh, after treatment or your turbos, uh, maybe your exhaust manifolds. Uh, when you combine that liquid with the dry powder, uh, it really gives you the best, uh, you know, the best ability to put the fire out and keep the fire out. Uh, so liquid chemical is, is, is better for, you know, super hot surfaces because it's going to create a film like su substance uh, over that surface. And then, uh, you know, which would in turn, um, you know, help from any type of reflash or, uh, um, you know, anything like that from the fire starting again. Um, so, you know, a few benefits of the dual agent system, uh, it does protect against class A, B, and C fires. So, for example, you wouldn't want a liquid-only system, uh, you know, uh, because if you're going to be pointing nozzles at the electrical box or you're fighting an electrical fire, uh, liquid chemical is the, you, you know, that's that's the opposite of what you want to do. You want to hit that with a dry powder so it's not going to ruin everything. Um, and so on and so forth there. Um, the, uh, you know, another thing about the dual agent versus a liquid agent only uh, that we see is that the liquid agent, you have to use a lot more of it. Um, and of course, you know, when you're using more of something, it's always going to be more expensive. Uh, not only that, but the liquid agents themselves are more expensive than the dry powder. Um, so, you know, not only is it, uh, you know, more advantageous to use a dual agent system, but you're, you know, at the end of the day, you're probably going to save a little bit of money and uh, you're not going to have, have to use as many tanks, which in turn, you know, you're not going to have as much weight on the machines. Uh, we all, we all know how, uh, um, you know, fickle, uh, you know, people could be about the weight on the machines and everything. So, uh, you know, dual agent system, it just gives you the best of both worlds is, is what we call it. Uh, total flooding with the fastest fire knockdown with the dry powder, uh, cools hot surfaces, and, and it's more economical at the end of the day. So do not discount the benefit of a dual agent system. Number four. All right, number five, uh, the, uh, the importance of not overlooking third-party certifications. Uh, so here at Apex, we have our FM approval, we have our active fire approval, our CE certification, and we are an ISO 9001 approved company. Um, so very quick, FM is the uh, most rigorous and uh, you know toughest testing certification process for fire suppression for heavy duty mobile equipment. Um, so uh, back in 2017, FM got all the manufacturers together and said, hey, what are some of the things, what are some of the certifications that that we need to have, uh, you know, in order for uh, to get this type of approval or whatnot? And uh, we were actually the first ones to gain our FM approval, um, which is the FM 5970 HDME. Uh, approval and, and our entire product line is FM approved. Um, but since we do business all over the world, even you know FM is a uh, it's an insurance company based on in the U.S., but they are uh, recognized globally. And I'm sure most of you on here 
uh, know about FM or know of FM. If you don't, uh, please feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to explain that, what, you know, what uh, testing goes into that type of thing. Um, so feel free to reach out after, after the webinar or if you have any questions about that. The active fire is actually the Australian safety standard. Uh, CE is going to be the European health and safety standard. Um, so, you know, just it goes to show that, you know, wherever we're doing business, if there's a certification out there that we can get, uh, we are going after it because we, you know, we believe and, you know, don't just take our word for it. You know, we have third party testing that comes in constantly and is always making sure that, hey, what we're say we're going to do, we are doing. Um, so, you know, very, very important. Um, you know, once you realize how comprehensive and rigorous those certification programs are, uh, you know, th that's why it's so important to pick, pick a system um, that has been, you know, third party approved. And, you know, more importantly, has the best approvals in the business, which is going to be that FM approval um, 5970. So, yeah, just a, a little bit more about the uh, FM certification. So we were the first ones to get that. We were actually the only uh, manufacturer to pass the original uh, certification process. Um, and I really think that goes and it shows, uh, you know, we take pride in these types of things, but it shows because this is all we do. Um, you know, building a fire suppression system for a piece of yellow iron or for a piece of mobile equipment, uh, this is this is it for us. So, you know, this is all we concentrate on. We were able to pass that the first time around. And funny enough, they had to lower the standards uh, uh, down a little bit for most of our competition to, you know, get that certification. So, um, you know, it's not, not necessarily a bragging point for us, but, you know, it, we take pride in that. It's something that, you know, every day we're trying to improve our system. And, you know, that that's just one thing that kind of sets us a, a, apart from the competition. So when you are buying one, be sure uh, when you are buying a system that, you know, they do have the certifications that are um, that are needed for your area. And as I mentioned, if you want more information about this, you can contact me or there's a lot of public information online as well, uh, where you could just go and, and Google or whatever search engine that you use uh, to find out more information on that. All right, moving forward here, number six. Why don't we just leave the installation to a distributor without any experience? Very, very dangerous here, my friends. Um, you wanna make sure that the distributor, whoever you're gonna use to install your system, uh, is not only qualified and has experience, but they need to be certified by the manufacturer. So all of our distributors that we work with, um, we run through rigorous classroom trainings with them. Uh, we have a product support team that that offers up training uh, typically to all of our distributors at no cost, and they go out and um, you know train these people. Uh, you know if they have new machines, if they're just starting out with us, and Maybe we go out and do a couple um, haul trucks or whatever it may be, and then they have a shovel come in. We want to make sure that whoever is touching our product and installing our product uh, is doing it the right way. So, um, you know, we do offer that that classroom and, and virtual training as well. So, um, you know, we can't always be on site. Uh, you know, at the time, but we offer virtual and then our entire product support team. Uh, and I, you know, a lot of our distributors can vouch for this is that, you know, we've had guys that are on a job or whatnot, and uh, maybe they get stumped or they have a question. Uh, you can phone one of our product support guys at any time. Uh, they all have, uh, you know, basically it's a, it's a, a call ring or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it there. Um, and, you know, whoever answers it first basically gets the call. So uh, they're constantly trying to help our distributors out. Um, so, you know, you don't want to just hire somebody that <clears throat> maybe does some other work for you and you're, you know, just trying to save a little bit, bit of money and, oh, oh, yeah, they can do it. Now, you got to make sure that whoever's installing this system is going to be uh, certified by the manufacturer themselves. Um you know, something that, you know, unfortunately, there's been people that have gotten, um, you know, a little backed up with this type of thing because they, you know, they use, 
you know, an unaffiliated distributor or somebody that hasn't been trained, you know, God forbid something was to happen and they had a fire, then it's going to go back on them. And then, you know, whoever's doing the fire investigation is going to go, hey, well, these guys weren't certified in, in, by Apex. They didn't do any training, you know, that type of thing. So, you know, you got to make sure you're you're doing your due diligence there and you're working with somebody, uh, you know, that really knows what they're doing. And, and again, has been uh, certified by the manufacturer themselves. Oh, uh, one more thing here. Uh, we do offer a, uh, a, a class each year. So. Uh, we call it Apex School, uh, where we invite, you know, a, a lot of our distributors down to do, um, basically, it's just about a day and a half, two days worth of training. Uh, you know, we go out and do some fun stuff like top golf, or, you know, go out to dinner, you know, just do a lot of networking amongst, uh, amongst themselves. Uh, but it's something that we try to get as many people as we can down to our facility to show them around and really show them the Apex way. Uh, and during that school, they can also get that recertification as well. So, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of our uh, distributors take advantage of that, uh, give their guys a couple of days. Usually it's, you know, maybe the couple of their best guys or whatever, uh, have them come down, learn more about Apex and and, you know, that type of thing and have a good time for a couple of days. All right, I can't believe we're almost done, but uh, we got number seven here. Um, very, very important. I, I think it's probably you know the most important thing is that, um, but just talking about the maintenance plan, we can't discount the importance of that. Um, you know, reg regular maintenance plans and inspections uh, are, are super important. So as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, a fire suppression is really only good as it's maintained. Uh, so our parts and, you know, everything that we uh, our makeup of the system is going to be the most rigorous on the market. But you can't have, uh, you know, you can't have nobody looking after it or you can't just have maybe the uh, sites techs looking at it. You really, you know, every six months is what we call this, call a semi-annual inspection. Uh, but it needs to be looked after every six months. Things need to be uh, looked after. So, um you know, want to make sure you have those regular testings, um, you know, uh, to, to figure out if you need any type of replacements, maybe an uh, electric actuator or, you know, whatever it may be, a battery needs to be replaced. Um, that's why it's it's so important to do that. Uh, not only the, the semi-annual inspections, but we also do operator training. So before your operators get on, we give them a list of things to look for. Um, you know, that's what we call the pre-shift inspection. That's something that we, you know, our, our distributors will train your, your operators on uh, while they're out there doing the installation. And then, you know, a lot of people say, hey, you know what, Chad, I know that your system only needs to be inspected every six months, but hey, we want to do it every three months or some people do it every month. Um, you know, the more, the better. Uh, we're just saying that at the bare minimum, you would need to have the system be inspected by a third party certified um, by the manufacturer to come in and do those inspections. Um, so please do not discount the importance of that maintenance plan. Um, as you guys know, really anything on a machine, if it's not maintained properly, can fail. Um, and, and that's the last thing that we want. Finally, if uh, if you guys want to learn more about, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've been babbling about to you here over the uh, last 30 minutes, you can go on to our website. Uh, we have free white paper on there, which are very informative and, um, you know, can can give you a, a you know, a little bit of a, a boost or, or help when you go to purchase a fire suppression system. And then, of course, I want you guys to call me, uh, you know, if you have any questions, I'm you know, here at your disposal, I am the, uh, you know, business development manager for the entire uh, country of Canada. Um, but, you know, here at Apex, we work as a team. Uh, so, you know, you know, if you got something outside of Canada and, and you want to reach out to me as well, that's no problem. I'll get you to the right place or the right person. Um, so, you know, please, you know, take advantage of that. Get onto our website and go on. There's a lot of cool stuff you could download and print off. And then finally, uh, just wanted to, you know, kind of reiterate a few of the things, you know, of why our customers choose Apex and, and what they tell us why they chose us. 
is 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 our products are specially built for heavy duty equipment. So the parts, everything from the nuts and bolts, you know, to to the tanks, everything is specially built to go on a piece of heavy duty mobile equipment. So we don't make our parts to go into buildings. We don't make our parts to go into restaurants, you know, and doing all that. Our, our stuff is made for its purpose. It's reliable and robust. You do get a lower total cost of ownership with an AFEX system. And we talked about the stainless steel tubing versus hose. Hose has to be, uh, uh, you know, maintained and replaced a lot more. Um, you know, and, I, and typically, you know, in the in the underground world, I know we've got some people uh, uh, that are in the underground mining world here. And, uh, you know, typically they like to use more hose and, and we'll do more hose. That's fine. Um you know, we just like to think that if if we can get more stainless steel tubing on it, A, it's going to look better, B, it's going to last longer, uh, and it's just more professional. Um, and then the hinge nozzles. So you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. Our nozzles are always closed until the system actuate, and that's when they come open. So uh, as I mentioned, cross-contamination isn't a thing. Uh, you don't have caps or tops laying around on the on the ground. Um, I know that here in the U.S., MSHA can come through and and fine you big time for things like that. Um, so you know, incorporating those types of things, you do get that lower total cost of ownership. And not only that, but when you're when you have to maintain it. So after we go and do the installation, and you're maintaining our system, uh, if there was to be a discharge our system is much cheaper to recharge than the competition. Um, and mostly that has to deal with the fact that our system, you know, can, can function pneumatically. Um, we have one electric actuator, even if you have five or six tanks on a haul truck or a shovel, whatever it may be, you've got that one electric actuator. And that'll be the only thing that you'll, well, you'll need to replace more stuff, but you won't have to replace more electric actuators uh, with our, competition you know you can tend that tends to get very pricey when you've got six different tanks on a machine and you've got to change six different electric actuators so uh, you know we like to think of ourselves as that lower uh, total cost of ownership leader uh, we do integrate with new technologies like telematics so uh, Kamatsu, CAT they all have their telematics and our uh, control unit can hook up to that um, and also the independent testing and approvals. So, you know, all the third party stuff that we talked about, um, you know, and then our company, you know, we're specialists in heavy equipment. We understand your industry. This is all we do. Um, so, you know, we know where the, the harsh conditions that your machines are going into. Um, and, you know, so we've made our system uh, to be that rug, rugged and, you know, robust system that uh, that you need on your equipment. Uh, the biggest thing, you know, especially right now in Canada, what I've been hearing is, is, is you know, it's hard to get product. It's hard to get parts. Um, you know, these are these are some of the things that I hear quite a bit. The good thing is here at Apex, we have high inventory and short lead times. So if you need 50 systems shipped out to you tomorrow, I could go back to the back right now, get them packed up and probably have them out the door tomorrow. Um, you know, we have the picture here is going to be. Uh, during COVID. Uh, and as you can see, we've got, you know, our entire warehouse is, is filled up. Uh, we're ready to ship. We're ready to go. Uh, so, you know, high inventory, short lead times. Most importantly, I think about our company is the excellent customer service and product support. Um, so, you know, we're not this big conglomerate corporation. We are a, a privately owned company uh, that's been, uh, you know, two owners, two brothers own the company now. So, um, you know, we're not have to, having to answer to stockholders or shareholders or whatnot. You know, I have a, a free line of communication right to ownership. Uh, it means a lot for the customer. I'm telling you, it, it just it being able to get things done quickly, uh, not only with customer support, but also product support as well. So I think if you if you spoke with some of our more tenured distributors, they would tell you, man, it's so nice to be able to call somebody at uh, Apex and know that you're going to get somebody on the phone each time you call. Um, so, you know, we are a, uh, uh, 
you know, worldwide company. We have systems all over the world, but at the end of the day, you're dealing with a, a you know, smaller privately owned company that, you know, wants to take care of you um, at the end of the day. So, uh, you know, those are just a few of the things that, you know, our customers have told us over the years, you know, about why they choose Apex. And with that, um, we're going to open it up for questions, uh, comments, feedback, whatever you can do to help us make this better next time. Um, you know, we'd really appreciate it. Um, again, uh, oh gosh, I see my phone number. I put my phone number on here wrong. It's 984 uh, area code, just in case, you know, anybody was trying to reach out to me. But email uh, is no problem. I can get right back to you on email as well. But uh if you guys want to, you know, open this thing up for questions, um, I believe they can just type their questions into a uh, into the chat there. Um, we can do that, uh, and and we'll go from there. All right. So I got one question for you. Um, how does the fire risk assessment work? Um, are there standards for certain types of machines? Yeah, so good question. Um, so as far as a, a fire risk assessment goes, uh, it, it's really all about, you know, first and foremost, we are going to, uh, as a manufacturer, we are going to give a me minimum recommendation to, um, you know, to, to the distributor themselves. Um, you know, but it, it's really on them to go out and what you're going to be looking for are, are you know, different hot spots throughout the machine. So you're obviously going to be looking at the engine. Uh, you know, if there's any after treatment turbos, you're just looking for different places where you see uh, fire risk. Um, and, uh, you know, you want to make sure that that's done properly. Obviously, we talked about that a little bit, but, uh, you know, making sure that the distributor that you're working with, you know, has been certified by the manufacturer um, and, and, you know, they know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. All right. Um, so my custom, my current system provider said that their lead times are three to six months. Um, about how soon do you think uh, Apex's is? So lead times like to get a system? Is that what they're saying? Okay. Yeah, no, uh, you can't wait around that long, right? I mean, I know that, that you know, supply chain has been, uh, for a lot of people, has been affected. And I know it's affecting machines or whatnot. But, you know, like I said, we can get stuff out the door quickly. Uh, a typical turnaround time when I'm shipping up to Canada, um, you know, you know, typically shipping out of our warehouse within a couple of days. Um, and then, you know, transit time, depending on where it's going in Canada, can any be anywhere from maybe, you know, six to eight days uh, if it's coming from our location. Uh, but we do have distributors that are, uh, you know, already have stock that are in Canada. So if there's anybody out there that's, you know, struggling, struggling with supply chain, can't get parts, that type of thing. Um, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. I can I can definitely help you out in that situation. Good question. All right. Uh, how do you dimension the amount of agent, powder or liquid required for each machine? Another good question here. So our engineering team, uh, you know, is typically going to come, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, the process looks like this. So my customer will come to me and say, hey, Chad, I've got a, you know, whatever it is, doesn't matter, whatever type of machine it is, a haul truck. Uh, I'm going to go to my engineering team. I'm going to give them all the specifications on the machine. So really what we're looking for is the weight, uh, the amount of diesel fuel, the amount of hydraulic fuel uh, that's on the machine. And then, you know, we're going to come up with that minimum recommendation, um, you know, for, for what type of agent needs to go where. We talked a little bit about the uh, dual agent systems, but, you know, dry powder is really going to be, you know, the fastest fire knockdown. Um, you know, so that's, you're going to want to have probably, typically you're going to have more dry powder than you are liquid. Um, and that's just because you're going to have more dry powder nozzles. And then you're going to come back with the liquid nozzles in your really, really hot areas. Um, so, you know, whether that be, a, you know, an exhaust manifold or, or turbos or whatever, that's really where you're going to want to have your liquid nozzles pointed. Um, so at the end of the day, 
that's why it's so important to do that fire risk assessment um, to say, hey, this is, oh man, I think we need to have eight dry nozzles here, uh, four liquid nozzles here. Uh, but that's just something that, you know, getting that product support training from Apex, uh, speaking with those guys, you know, you know, constantly, and then and then having the distrib distributor who's doing the work. Uh, that's why it's so important to have them be, uh, you know, qualified to do that. And one more. Yeah. Um, so we'll take. Um, so we have trained dif distributors in Canada right now. Yep. That's correct. So we do have um, uh, trained distributors in Canada. Uh, this is a newer emerging market for us. We do, you know, the majority of our business has been in North America, or excuse me, the United States, uh, you know, in South America. Uh, so, you know, this is a, a, a market that's huge uh, for mining and forestry and everything. Um, so, you know, we are setting up different distributors across the country, uh, depending on location. Uh, but for right now, we do have a handful of distributors that carry product uh, and that are certified by our product support team to do installations and maintain the systems. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, thank you so much, Chad, for coming by and talking to, well, not coming by, <laughs> he's down the hall for me. <laughs> but thanks um, for taking the time to come out and, and talk to us a little bit about uh, fire suppression, about, uh, the heavy equipment. And if you guys have any questions, obviously you can reach out to Chad. Um, his information is right up on the screen. You can also um, go to our website, um, afexsystems.com. You can uh, contact, contact us through that. And then uh, you can also always pick up the phone and just give us a call. Um, we answer the phone really quickly and you will be speaking to a real person. So, <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for attending. Um, we really appreciate it. And we're excited to do these more in the future. All right. Have a good afternoon. Cheers, everyone. Afternoon. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Thank you.